Here is the recap of the second season of American Horror Story. The action unfolds in the insane asylum Briar Cliff, where a reporter Lana arrives. The girl asks the manager of the clinic, Sister Jude, to give her the opportunity to interview one of the patients. It turns out that for some time in the city was running a serial killer who killed women and skinned them. He was nicknamed Bloody Face and was sent to an asylum after his capture. Not wanting to publicize all the horrors that happened to people in the walls of the hospital, Jude refuses the annoying reporter, but she still finds a way to illegally enter the building. As a result of examining the cell, the girl is attacked, after which she comes to her senses and realizes that she has turned from a visitor into a patient. Meanwhile, a married couple who are concerned about their son's behavior come to the asylum for help. They are sure that something terrible is happening to him and the only hope for salvation is faith and therapy. The clinic workers examine the young man and realize that the boy is possessed by a demon. When the exorcist tries to exorcise the dark powers, the demon moves into a nun named Mary, Jude's assistant. Meanwhile, a guy named Kit, whom everyone believes to be bloody face, meets Grace at the clinic. The girl believes in his innocence and assures him that she herself was in the clinic by mistake. Now Kit has two options. Either he will be recognized as mentally unhealthy and will spend the rest of his days in the asylum, or the psychiatrist will recognize him as sane and then the court will sentence him to death in the electric chair. To determine Kit's fate, psychiatrist Oliver arrives at the clinic, who is also attracted to Lana's story. The man agrees to visit her girlfriend and send her a message, but the girl was not at home, which means that no one will help Lana. Grace and Kit want to escape and Lana is ready to help, but only on the condition that Bloody Face does not leave the hospital. She thwarts one rescue attempt because Grace wanted to leave with Kit, but the second time the reporter began to doubt the guy's guilt. In the end, the trio waited until all the patients and staff start watching the movie in the common room and tried to escape. The nymphomaniac girl agreed to distract the guard, but soon she is caught by a local doctor, Arden. He is disgusted by the very fact of her existence, so without remorse the man puts her monstrous experiments. At this time the trio manages to go outside, but near the clinic they are attacked by humanoid monsters, forcing the protagonists back into the building. A new patient appears at the clinic who introduces herself as Anne Frank. She believes herself to be the very martyr who managed to survive in German captivity. At the doctor's rounds, the girl recognizes Dr. Arden as a Nazi who performed horrible experiments on everyone who fell into his hands. Jude is interested in the girl's story because she has long disliked Arden and his methods of work. The woman decides to seek help from a private detective, hoping that he will be able to find out the truth. After a while, Anna is picked up by her husband who dispels Jude's suspicions and takes the mentally unstable wife home. Before canceling her request to the detective, the woman goes to Arden's lab to check her hunches and find some clues. Except she had no idea that her assistant Mary had already removed all the evidence of Arden's guilt in the form of a mutilated nymphomaniac. Jude calls the detective to cancel her request, but ends up finding out that Anna was right. Arden was indeed a Nazi doctor who performed monstrous experiments on humans under the pretext of medical breakthroughs. Jude wants to share his suspicions with Monsignor, the director of the clinic, but he doesn't know yet that Arden is conducting experiments on living people with his consent. As a result, Jude is fired from the asylum. Meanwhile, Oliver helps Lana to escape and brings her to his house. After a while, the girl begins to realize that something is wrong with him, and soon her fears come true. It turns out that Oliver is actually the bloody face. The killer locks her in the basement along with the corpse of her girlfriend, Soon he receives a call from Kit, whom he tricked into making a tape recording of the confessions to those horrific murders. Kit demands that Oliver explain everything to the police. After all, because of that tape, he was taken to prison and now he is waiting for the death penalty. Enraged by Kit's rude behavior, Oliver returns to Lana and rapes her. After what happened, the killer realizes that he still has to deal with his captive but the reporter manages to beat him and escape from imprisonment. She runs out on the highway and gets into the first car, but even here a man with an obvious mental disorder is behind the wheel. Eventually he shoots himself in the head and the car is involved in an accident. When Lana wakes up, 
She realizes with horror that she is once again in an asylum. Kit talks to the investigator and realizes that he will not be able to avoid execution. Then he decides to escape and returns to the asylum to visit Grace. But in time for the lovers to meet, a monster from the forest appears and attacks them, and the guard sees Kit killing the creature. He ends up shooting the protagonist, but Grace covers him with her body and dies. Meanwhile, Arden comes to Jude and asks for her help in fighting the possessed Mary. The woman believes the doctor's words and, on his tip, falls into a trap. As it turns out, Mary instigated one of the patients to take revenge on Jude and locked the two of them in the same room. In an attempt to defend herself, the sister kills the patient and the Monzinor locks her in the asylum as a patient. The next day, Mary uses electroshock therapy on her former boss, after which the woman gradually begins to lose her mind. At this time, Arden tries to get rid of Grace's body, but a sudden flash of bright light, which Kit once told him about, blinds the man, and when he regains consciousness, Grace's body is gone. Arden suggests that Kit's version about aliens is possible, so, having analyzed past experiences, guesses that the appearance of an alien race is somehow related to the threat to Kit's life. He offers the guy to experimentally test his theory, but to do so he will have to kill him for a while. Kit agrees, and after the procedure asks if he got to know the truth, but in response Arden lies to him about the absence of any changes. In fact, while the guy was dead, there was another flash of light in the next room after which Grace, nine months pregnant, appeared. Oliver learns that Lana is back in the asylum and visits her. He wants to kill her, but the girl has a trump card. It turns out that she is pregnant by him. The reporter decides to take advantage of her situation and with the help of Keith brings Oliver out into the open by taping his confession to the murders. Then she tries to induce a miscarriage with a hanger, but her plan fails and the pregnancy persists. Monsignor begins to guess that Mary is really inhabited by a demon, so he asks Jude for advice, who is sure that the only way to get rid of the devil is to kill Mary. Monsignor throws the girl down from the third floor, and Dr. Arden, who has long had feelings for her, decides to burn with her in the cremation chamber. While Jude has not yet lost her mind, she asks one of the nuns to help Lana leave the clinic, and the woman agrees. She dresses the girl and leads her out of the building. Soon Lana visits Oliver's house and kills him, after which she takes the tape of his confession to the police and Kit is declared innocent. Lana begins to write books in which she describes her experiences in the asylum and Kit begs the Monsignor to give him Grace's death certificate, thus letting her go home with him. The protagonists, along with the baby, return to Kit's house, where they want to start all over again. But there, as it turns out, lives his wife and child who was once abducted by aliens. Kit with his wife, Grace and two toddlers live in the same house. Grace believes that the aliens who gave them the babies are sure to return because they are destined for a great mission, except that Kit's wife is not waiting for this moment and with horror imagines the consequences. One day she attacks Grace with an axe, after which she falls into the hospital Bria Cliff, where she soon dies. Sometime later, Kit meets Lana at the presentation of her next book. He doesn't understand why after all this time she still hasn't closed the asylum. As a result, the guy learns that she is not going to do anything. However, after a while, the woman does return to the treatment center with an exposing report and tries to find Jude, but instead finds records of a certain woman who was given into Kit's care. The woman meets up with a buddy and learns that after that conversation at the cafe, Kit took Jude into his home. He realized that in order to move on, he needed to accept his past and forgive this woman. He eventually brought her into his home and introduced her to his children as a nanny, and six months later she died. Some time later, Kit got married again, but soon he got cancer and inexplicably disappeared right in his clinic room. Forty years pass. Lana has become a famous and rich elderly woman, to whom reporters came to record an exclusive for a TV program. During the interview, the protagonist talks about the Oliver child, whom she abandoned while still in the maternity hospital. For a long time, she worried that she gave the baby to strangers, but she could not raise a son from a brutal killer. A few years later, Lana wanted to see the child and met him on the playground. Since then, she never saw him again. From time to time, she wondered who the boy she abandoned 40 years ago had become. When the reporters and camera crew left, Lena's son showed up. 
It turns out that when he was young, he learned that she was his mother and Bloody Face was his biological father. Since then, he grew up hating Lana and admiring his deceased relative. Furthermore, he has begun to copy his crimes by killing everyone who enters the abandoned Briarcliff Asylum. The man pulls out a gun, hoping to kill Lana, but the woman shoots first. This is the end of the second season. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching, goodbye.